Um, I think the speakers have been particularly useful on giving some concrete information about what they're doing and what sh you should do. Uh, sometimes you get very waffly speakers, but a couple of those presentations have had a lot of information in them, useful information. I, mean, I was talking about the um, stuff that's coming out of the EU, the directive that's, well, the regulation that's just come out on electronic identity and trust services, and then also the future one that's coming out on network information security and on data protection, which of course got everyone very worried. Um, some idea about what they ought to be doing to secure themselves, because if government's going to get digital by default going, it's got to make sure that people trust the information that's coming from government, that they're dealing with the person they think they're dealing with, or the website they think they're dealing with. Oh, um, well I look at legislation and the regulations coming out, um, most of my work's actually not in the Chamber of the House of Lords, by the time it's got there I think it's too late. So I turn most of my time, particularly with the Digital Policy Alliance, trying to influence the way that the people are thinking about the new regulations, are putting them together, thinking ahead about what's coming next, and also the pitfalls in things that they've produced already where maybe it's not up to date any longer. Ooh, help, I'll never remember all the stuff we're doing, but um, right at the moment, quite a lot on the Internet of Things. Um, we've just got a new work group starting up on age verification over the Internet, because that's quite a thorny issue, because some things people won't want you to necessarily know they're doing. I mean, some people uh, don't like gambling, but there are gamblers, and do they, should they have to tell the entire world they're gamblers, for instance? Um, so there are some thorny problems there. We're also doing work on the, the digital single market stuff coming out of Europe, so we have ties to the European Internet Foundation as well. And there's a lot of other stuff going on too. Um, come and join and come to one of the work groups and see. It's very early days, but there's a lot of thought going into it. Partly because, I would come up say, partly because David Cameron has said that this is essential. You know, protection of children, protecting ch children from adult sites, legal adult sites, protecting children from gambling, ch protecting children from alcohol. All these things are now being um, purchased and handled over the internet. But if we're going to protect the, the next generation properly, we do need to have systems in place which are also acceptable to adults' privacy. Well, it's very similar to the business about the right for rehabilitation after a criminal offence and it's expired and taken off your record after a while. But there are some things that are so heinous that they shouldn't be. So it's a difficult one because I don't think there are some things that factually happen that should be pretended that they didn't ever happen. On the other hand, we have the right to grow up, change, behave more responsibly as we grow older, um, some of us. and. Um, there is the, uh, and there's also the problem of actually practically doing it. It's very difficult when the information is all over the place and it's sitting on backup drives and it's mirrored around the world. So I'm not sure how practical it is in this internet wage. It sounds good, it, but I'm not sure it, it'll work. Oh, it's going to be very difficult because the trouble is that some aggregated, some data in aggregation is fine and very useful for management purposes. At an individual level, it may reveal things that are useful to criminals about you. Um, so in data mining big data, well big data just means a huge amount of stuff stuffed together in one place. In mining it, in looking for information in that, you may first establish patterns that aren't really true. They look as if they're leading to criminality and they're not. So people may get, um, if it's looking at people as opposed to just general management, it may target people in unfairly. On the other hand, um, some of that stuff again may be very personal to you and may reveal things about what you're doing when you're not out, well, sorry, when you're out so criminals could use it to burgle your house. It's a very confused landscape, that whole internet of things and big data. They're different, but the internet of things will lead to huge agglomerations of data. So, you know, what does it come? And also, of course, some of this stuff like communications data could be used for business intelligence purposes by foreign powers who might, under memorandum of understanding, get access to it. So, it's a thorny area. Sorry. Ah, you'd probably never. And this is the trouble, because people have got their own agendas, their own motivations. Human, and just being human comes into it. If someone's in distress, you do your best to help them. So therefore, certain other people can try and use the standard human reactions and emotions in order to find out stuff that they shouldn't find out. We will always have a problem. It's going to be a constant fight. 
uh, we can use technology to a certain extent, we've got to use human beings' sense, common sense as well. And we've got to keep alert. The world is never going to be a perfect place and we need to keep it human.